is going on guys, Garrett here. Welcome back to another video. Now you may notice that the recording setup that I have today is a little bit different than all my other videos that I've sat down in. So basically I moved my desk from that wall to here in the center of this room. I thought the flags in the background would be a better backdrop for when I'm recording. And I sort of just took this flag off this wall and put it onto my desk to make a sort of cleaner layout and just sort of laid stuff out in the middle of it. So basically today's video is going to be sports videography gear for 2020. All the stuff that I have with me today that I use every time I go out to a game. Now it's a little bit tough at the moment because of this coronavirus outbreak. All the sports are shut down until the 27th of April and everything is suspended. So I sort of just have all this gear sitting around and it's not really being put to use but I'm just going to show you guys what I use today uh, when I go to film games and I'll sort of get into what I used when I first started out filming. So let's get right into this video. Okay so this is the first camera that I ever shot with. Uh, this is my first camera that I had. It is the PowerShot SX530HS by Canon. Uh, this camera is super old. Uh, it's basically just a little mini cheap camera. Uh, I'm not sure how much this goes for. I'll put it up on the screen right here. Yeah, it's a little cheap little camera. The zoom is actually super powerful. Uh, when I was first starting doing pictures and stuff, this camera was great. It's 50 times optical zoom, so you can really get a far focal length with this lens. I believe it's up to like 300, honestly, because I'll show some photos right up here. They're super good photos. They're super far zoomed in. All those photos that I just showed were from this camera. Uh, so I have the price up. Uh, I'll link it below for anyone that's starting photography. Uh, for video, this camera is very bad. I'll put up a, a sample video of just a little bit of B-roll with this camera uh, right now. So the footage is actually super basic. Uh, I think it's only 1080 up to 30, honestly. So video, if you're using this camera, is not the way to go. I honestly suggest this only for photography if you are going to invest in this camera. Now the Canon PowerShot SX530HS does not have detachable lenses. It comes with a singular attached lens. Um, it is just a whole one body camera, uh, but the zoom is actually, again, very far. If I choose to zoom in, it will actually extend very far. Uh, this is a very powerful zoom. As you can see right now, this is the video that I'm recording. Uh, that's my camera right over there. Uh, again, the video quality is not that good. If I choose to take a picture, the quality comes back a lot. The focal length on this camera is very large. Uh, this does come out a little flip up external flash like all Canons do. It's very light, very easy to carry around. You can literally just throw it in a tiny drawstring bag. Very durable. I don't know how many times I've dropped this camera and it's been completely fine. It does come with a detachable lens cap. I don't have it right now with me because this again is super old. But yeah, this is the Canon SX530HS. Not very interesting. Let's move on from this. Now the next camera that I actually invested in was the Canon G7X Mark II. Uh, most of my vlogs that I filmed on this channel have been with the G7X Mark II. If you look at my journey to success video, uh, it's not a vlog, but again, it was a video that was filmed with this camera, 100% with this camera. No other cameras were used. I did not use my Sony a7 III. Uh, I was sitting in my car and I just set this little camera up. This is a great vlogging camera. A lot of big YouTubers use this camera several years later. Uh, Canon did come out with a G7X Mark III uh, a couple years back. This is a relatively super old camera. Uh, but it still is super great and super versatile for any new vloggers that are out there. I believe this ranges from $400 to $500, so it's a pretty expensive camera. So first off, the it's super light. Okay, so you can throw this thing in your pocket, won't weigh you down at all. Uh, again, super small, throw it in your pocket. Flip up screen, super great for vlogging. See yourself when you're recording. Full strap, standard Canon settings. You got your exposure ring, pretty good zoom. Um, it's not fantastic, since this is only a point and shoot camera, if you zoom in too much you will start to lose a little bit of quality. Uh, it does go up to 1080-60. I do have a couple of Gillette clips filmed with this camera from when I went for my high school Super Bowl. I will put those up on the screen now, but this is a great camera. It's super light, super small, easy to vlog with, great zoom if you need it for vlogging. And that's basically the G7X Mark II. Again, I will have uh, all my cameras linked in the description below and all my gear that I show in this video. Now these two cameras, they're not camera cameras that I use to like film stuff, cinematic obviously, but these are action cameras anytime I row or maybe when I go out on vacation I need to go in the water, whatever. GoPros, obviously the best action camera out there. I know a lot of you guys may like the DJI Osmo Action. Uh, I have tested it a little bit. I don't have any clips because uh, it's my friends, but there is a little bit of lag I noticed on the front screen and a little bit of just internal lag. The processing is a little bit slower 
Uh, I prefer GoPros a lot more. These cameras are great. They're super durable. Personally, when I was using the DJI Osmo Action, I didn't like how flimsy it felt. It was too light in your hand. It wasn't a strong build. Uh, the GoPros are super strong. I personally don't like how the new 8s have a non-detachable lens cover, uh, like the 7s. The 8 is a little bit more flimsy to say. I think the legs that detach from the bottom was a good idea so you don't have to constantly carry around a housing with your 7. But I think the legs were a little bit flimsily built. They are full metal so obviously they're pretty strong but I think that the way these are looking right now you can easily push these in a little bit too hard and they will snap off and they are very to just flap around. They're not very strong. Um, I think GoPro really could have kept the other design or at least found a way to build these a little bit stronger. But yeah, I use these maybe if I strap them to a player's helmet uh, during the game. I was trying to do that during lacrosse, but again, the MIAA uh, decided to suspend the season because of the coronavirus. So these, again, I have the 7 and the 8, uh, both black editions, great cameras. Uh, both have screens on the back and these are just fantastic cameras easy to use Okay, so I just switched over from my Sony a7 III to the Canon G7X Mark II All footage from now until after I'm done reviewing this camera will be on the G7X Mark II I do realize there's a significant quality decrease in the G7X Mark II uh, Because the a7 III is a more expensive camera as soon as I'm done reviewing this camera I will switch back to the a7 III and the audio and video will increase again So the Sony a7 III is my main shooter. I use this wherever I go, travel, business, sports, whatever it is. Even if I'm shooting vlogs, I use this camera. The Sony a7 III is a great camera. This ranges from $1799 to $2000, depending on your distributor. I got this from amazon.com for $2000 at the time when I bought it, which was two years ago. Uh, so it's still genuinely new when I purchased it. This camera is fantastic. I have used Canon cameras, Nikon cameras, etc. I even tried out a Lumix one time at a camera store, wasn't a fan. The reason for that is because, first of all, the Sony a7 series cameras, they're robust, they're strong, great cameras overall. So let's go over Canon cameras for a second. So Canon cameras, when you feel them, when you pick them up, so I do realize that this is the SX530HS that I reviewed earlier. The cameras, obviously, this is $200. The EOS R is a very expensive camera. Uh, it's higher end, but I have seen significant similarities between this camera and the EOS R that my friend has that I picked up a couple times and shot some shots. So the EOS R and the PowerShot 530HS, the buttons, both flimsy. Uh, the buttons, literally the same layout same screen i know the canons have the flip out screens all that stuff uh they're very rattly in your hands they seem to rattle a lot there's a lot of clunk to them they they just sort of feel cheap in your hands they're made out of this weird plastic uh that's very scratchy and just doesn't feel that strong so the canon eos r away from the physical build qualities there's a lot of functions that the sony a7 III is capable of uh, that the EOS R is not capable of. So the Canon EOS R and the Sony a7 III came out the same year. The a7 III was April 2018 and the EOS R was October 2018. So it's the same year, uh, genuinely the same kind of research had been done on cameras, sort of how far cameras could perform back in 2018. That's not too long ago, only two years ago. So nothing has really changed from 2018 now. The Sony a7 III can go up to 4K 30, down 1080, 120. Um, 1080 120 is a great capability to have when you're filming sports. You can get that crisp slow motion. The Canon EOS R cannot do that. They can only go to 1080 60 and 4K 30 with a significant crop. There's a smaller sensor on the EOS R and you get a lot of crop when you choose to go to 4K. And then if you don't want that crop, you can go down to 1080, but you're only getting 60. So you're sacrificing your frames and your video quality overall just so you don't have crop. Now, when I was looking at cameras, it was between the EOS R and the a7 III, and I saw that there was significant crop in the 4K video quality, and then I looked at the a7 III, 1080, 120, no crop whatsoever. There's no argument between video quality and Canon compared to Sony. 1080, 120, 4K 30, no crop, easily Sony. Now, there are some drawbacks with the Sony a7 III and Sony in general that I do wish I could go to Canon for. 
Uh, one of those things mainly is price. The Sony series cameras and their glass, if you go to native lenses for Sony, they're very expensive. So this lens, the 18 to 105, which I'll get into later, it's super expensive. It was 650 to 700 dollars, depending on your retailer. Again, you can get an 18 to 105 for a significantly lower price if you went to Canon. Yes, I do realize you can buy a Canon lens and get an adapter, but you will lose significant video quality if you do go through an adapter because you're separating the actual lens to the camera through a piece of glass. So it's a little bit different in terms of how the camera will perform with the lens. Obviously, yes, I know the G Master lenses are significantly more expensive than the Sigmas. I did choose to go with the G Master because again, they're better quality, better build lenses. The next thing is color. Sony colors are very drawn out. Uh, the video that you are seeing right now is significantly color graded because of how Sony performs. I do realize it's all based on setting, but Sony colors themselves straight out of the camera will not be as good as Canon. It's just how the camera are developed. If you ask anybody, Canon colors are a lot better than Sony. I do realize there are presets and LUTs that you can apply to your video, but I just think Canon colors are naturally straight out of camera better than Sony. Now the Rode video might go that I'm using right now attached to the Sony a7 III. So with the G7X, you only get in-camera audio, so that's why the audio isn't that good. But when I record on the a7 III, I'm always using my Rode video might go. This is about 60 to 70 dollars on Amazon. Uh, it's a great quality microphone for beginners that don't really want to break the bank and get sophisticated with their audio. I am looking to invest in a new microphone. I will get that soon. Probably the Rode Video Mic Go. It has separate channels. It's run by batteries. It isn't just a simple one plug into the camera. You get a lot better audio, less background noise. But this is very good for starters. I highly suggest if you're looking for a vlog microphone for a, one of these bigger cameras. A lot of small point shoots like the G7X don't have an external audio. Uh, it's just at the top of the camera with these little separate microphone inside of the camera but this has great additional audio to the camera uh, the in-body audio is not that great but when you attach a microphone it just makes a world of a difference so that is my main shooter overall this is a great setup i love it i use it all the time let's get into the gimbal that i use sometimes for business or sports okay we just switched back over to the a7 III. everything has changed up back to normal let's go over my gimbal this is the zion crane 2 uh, this retails for around 800 dollars depending on your distributor it can go up to 900 uh, this is a very stable very strong gimbal it's very heavy it takes a lot to weigh around i uh, use this around halftime at football game for crowd footage sort of just get those panning shots i use this for vlogs for cinematics i've used this in multiple of my cinematics inside of my vlogs you can see my most recent vlogs uh, those were all gimbal shots anything where it's a cinematic i use a gimbal this is super easy to strap on to your camera bag uh, it's very portable you just strap it on and you're set to go uh, there's so many different functions with this gimbal. Uh, it's very easy to balance. This is the two, so it's a single-handed. Uh, there's no handle or anything. It's just a single-handed. You put your camera on and you basically go around and it's gonna stay stable the whole time. Uh, this is a great gimbal. I use it all the time. I got this two years ago. So I don't really use this during sports games. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too hard to control, obviously, as you're going with a game. You don't want to be caught up having to like stabilize it and having to like make sure you're following the right thing. So obviously during hockey games, I won't use this. During lacrosse, I might use it. Uh, but during football, I'm trying to use it more. If I do film some football later on, I will use this a lot more. I basically use this gimbal all the time. And I highly suggest it for anybody that can afford it. Basically do your research on how you're gonna use it before you buy it because until a couple weeks ago, I did not use this thing whatsoever. Uh, I use it for business videos, so that's good. But for sports videos, I didn't really use it and I didn't start doing business videos until a little while ago. Really do your research before you think about spending $800 on something that you might not use. So on to our final product uh, that I use during the sports season is a drone. I think drones are great, though obviously you have your restrictions based on where you live and the area that you're in. Uh, you do have to register these with the FAA. It's $30 for a basic drone registration. Now, the reason my drone doesn't have any propellers on them is because if you watched my abandoned tower airfield vlog, I crashed this into a tree by accident. This is the DJI Mavic Air. I didn't mention that earlier, but these are pretty expensive. I believe this one's $1,300. I'm looking to upgrade this to the Mavic Pro probably. Uh, this is a fairly old drone. It's fairly beat up, but it's a great drone overall. All my clips are with this drone. Um, a couple of my friends have the Mavic Pros, and I think those are a lot better, but for a beginner drone, you can get this 
or the Spark, or even the Mini that just came out. It's a small drone. I just register them, learn how to fly them, and they're just great additions to your arsenal. So guys, that was all the stuff that I carry around with me when I'm going to shoot videos. This is a very long video. If you watched until the end, thank you for staying through this whole video. I do realize it was a long one, but I really wanted to get across all the stuff that I use and push some suggestions on you guys. All the stuff that I talked about today is linked below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.